Hecate is a goddess in ancient Greek religion and mythology, most often shown holding a pair of torches, a key, snakes, or accompanied by dogs, and in later periods depicted as three-formed or triple-bodied. She is variously associated with crossroads, entranceways, night, light, magic, witchcraft, the moon, knowledge of herbs and poisonous plants, graves, ghosts, necromancy, and sorcery. Her earliest appearance in literature was in Hesiod's Theogony in the 8th century BCE as a goddess of great honor with domains in sky, earth, and sea. Her place of origin is debated by scholars, but she had popular followings amongst the witches of Thessaly in an important sanctuary among the Carian Greeks of Asia Minor in Legina. Her oldest known representation was found in Selenunte, in Sicily. Hecate was one of several deities worshipped in ancient Athens as a protector of the Oikos, alongside Zeus, Hestia, Hermes, and Apollo. In the post-Christian writings of the Chaldean oracles, 2nd-3rd century CE, she was also regarded with some rulership over earth, sea, and sky, as well as a more universal role as savior, mother of angels and the cosmic world soul. Regarding the nature of her cult, it has been remarked, she is more at home on the fringes than in the center of Greek polytheism. Intrinsically ambivalent and polymorphous, she straddles conventional boundaries and eludes definition. A Greek magical papyrus from the late 3rd or early 4th century AD employs Hecate's name with that of the Mesopotamian deity Ereshkigal. The text invokes Hecate's help in avoiding punishment in the afterlife. Ereshkigal merely furnishes, the Greek netherworld goddess with a mysterious-sounding, foreign name. Whether or not Hecate's worship originated in Greece, some scholars have suggested that the name derives from a Greek root, and several potential source words have been identified. For example, Hecan Willing, may be related to the name Hecate. However, no sources suggested list will or willingness as a major attribute of Hecate, which makes this possibility unlikely. Another Greek word suggested as the origin of the name Hecate is Hecatos, an obscure epithet of Apollo interpreted as the far-reaching one. This has been suggested in comparison with the attributes of the goddess Artemis, strongly associated with Apollo and frequently equated with Hecate in the classical world. Supporters of this etymology suggest that Hecate was originally considered an aspect of Artemis prior to the latter's adoption into the Olympian pantheon. Artemis would have, at that point, become more strongly associated with purity and maidenhood, on the one hand, while her originally darker attributes like her association with magic, the souls of the dead, and the knight would have continued to be worshipped separately under her title Hecate. Though often considered the most likely Greek origin of the name, the Hecato's theory does not account for her worship in Asia Minor, where her association with Artemis seems to have been a late development, and the competing theories that the attribution of darker aspects and magic to Hecate were themselves not originally part of her cult. A strong possibility for the foreign origin of the name may be Hecate, a frog-headed Egyptian goddess of fertility and childbirth, who, like Hecate, was also associated with Q, ruler. The word, Heka, in the Egyptian language is also both the word for, magic, and the name of the god of magic and medicine, Heka Hecate possibly originated among the Carians of Anatolia, the region where most theophoric names invoking Hecate, such as Hecateus or Hecatomnus, the father of Mausolus, are attested, and where Hecate remained a great goddess into historical times, at her unrivaled cult site in Legina. While many researchers favor the idea that she has Anatolian origins, it has been argued that Hecate must have been a Greek goddess. The monuments to Hecate in Phrygia and Caria are numerous but of late date. William Berg observes, since children are not called after spooks, it is safe to assume that Carian theophoric names involving Hecate refer to a major deity free from the dark and unsavory ties to the underworld and to witchcraft associated with the Hecate of classical Athens. In particular, there is some evidence that she might be derived from the local sun goddesses based on similar attributes. If Hecate's cult spread from Anatolia into Greece, then it possibly presented a conflict, as her role was already filled by other more prominent deities in the Greek pantheon, above all by Artemis and Selene. This line of reasoning lies behind the widely accepted hypothesis that she was a foreign deity who was incorporated into the Greek pantheon. Other than in the Theogony, the Greek sources do not offer a consistent story of her parentage or of her relations in the Greek pantheon. 
Hecate was generally represented as three-formed or triple-bodied, though the earliest known images of the goddess are singular. Her earliest known representation is a small terracotta statue found in Athens. An inscription on the statue is a dedication to Hecate, in writing of the style of the 6th century, but it otherwise lacks any other symbols typically associated with the goddess. She is seated on a throne, with a chaplet around her head. The depiction is otherwise relatively generic. A 6th century fragment of pottery from Boeotia depicts a goddess which may be Hecate in a maternal or fertility mode. Crowned with leafy branches as in later descriptions, she is depicted offering a maternal blessing to two maidens who embrace her. The figure is flanked by lions, an animal associated with Hecate both in the Chaldean oracles, coinage, and reliefs from Asia Minor. In artwork, she is often portrayed in three statues standing back to back, each with its own special attributes. The second century travel writer Pausanias stated that Hecate was first depicted in triplicate by the sculptor Alcamenes in the Greek classical period of the late 5th century BC whose sculpture was placed before the temple of the wingless Nike in Athens. Though Alcamenes' original statue is lost, hundreds of copies exist, and the general motif of a triple Hecate situated around a central pole or column, known as a Hecateon, was used both at crossroads shrines as well as at the entrances to temples and private homes. These typically depict her holding a variety of items, including torches, keys, serpents, and daggers. Some Hecataea, including a votive sculpture from Attica of the 3rd century BC, include additional dancing figures identified as the Charites circling the triple Hecate and her central column. It is possible that the representation of a triple Hecate surrounding a central pillar was originally derived from poles set up at three-way crossroads with masks hung on them, facing in each road direction. In the 1st century AD, Ovid wrote, Look at Hecate, standing guard at the crossroads, one face looking in each direction. Apart from traditional Hecataea, Hecate's triplicity is depicted in the vast frieze of the Great Pergamon Altar, now in Berlin wherein she is shown with three bodies, taking part in the battle with the Titans. In the Argolid, near the shrine of the Dioscuri, Pausanias saw the temple of Hecate opposite the sanctuary of Eletheia. He reported the image to be the work of Scopus, stating further, this one is of stone, while the bronze images opposite, also of Hecate, were made respectively by Polycleitus and his brother Nasides, son of Mothan. While Greek anthropomorphic conventions of art generally represented Hecate's triple form as three separate bodies, the iconography of the triple Hecate eventually evolved into representations of the goddess with a single body, but three faces. In Egyptian-inspired Greek esoteric writings connected with Hermes Trismegistus, and in the Greek magical papyri of late antiquity, Hecate is described as having three heads, one dog, one serpent, and one horse. In other representations, her animal heads include those of a cow and a boar. The east frieze of a Hellenistic temple of hers at Legina shows her helping protect the newborn Zeus from his father Cronus. This frieze is the only evidence of Hecate's involvement in the myth of his birth. Dogs were closely associated with Hecate in the classical world. In art and in literature Hecate is constantly represented as dog-shaped or as accompanied by a dog. Her approach was heralded by the howling of a dog. The dog was Hecate's regular sacrificial animal, and was often eaten in solemn sacrament. The sacrifice of dogs to Hecate is attested for Thrace, Samothrace, Colophon, and Athens. A 4th century BCE marble relief from Cranon in Thessaly was dedicated by a race horse owner. It shows Hecate, with a hound beside her, placing a wreath on the head of a mare. It has been claimed that her association with dogs is suggestive of her connection with birth, for the dog was sacred to Eletheia, Genetilis, and other birth goddesses. Images of her attended by a dog are also found at times when she is shown as in her role as mother goddess with child, and when she is depicted alongside the god Hermes and the goddess Cybele in reliefs. Although in later times Hecate's dog came to be thought of as a manifestation of restless souls or demons who accompanied her, its docile appearance and its accompaniment of a Hecate who looks completely friendly in many pieces of ancient art suggests that its original signification was positive and thus likelier to have arisen from the dog's connection with birth than the dog's underworld associations. The association with dogs, particularly female dogs, could be explained by a metamorphosis myth in Lycophron, 
the friendly-looking female dog accompanying Hecate was originally the Trojan queen Hecuba, who leapt into the sea after the fall of Troy and was transformed by Hecate into her familiar. The polecat is also associated with Hecate. In her three-headed representations, Hecate often has one or more animal heads, including cow, dog, boar, serpent, and horse. Lions are associated with Hecate in early artwork from Asia Minor, as well as later coins and literature, including the Chaldean oracles. The frog, which was also the symbol of the similarly named Egyptian goddess Hecate, has also become sacred to Hecate in modern pagan literature, possibly due in part to its ability to cross between two elements. Hecate was closely associated with plant lore and the concoction of medicines and poisons. In particular she was thought to give instruction in these closely related arts. Hecate was associated with borders, city walls, doorways, crossroads and, by extension, with realms outside or beyond the world of the living. She appears to have been particularly associated with being, between, and hence is frequently characterized as a, liminal, goddess. Hecate mediated between regimes, Olympian and Titan, but also between mortal and divine spheres. This liminal role is reflected in a number of her cult titles, Apotropia, that turns away, protects, Enidia, on the way, Propylaia, before the gate, Triodia, who frequents crossroads, Clydaochos, holding the keys, etc. As a goddess expected to avert harmful or destructive spirits from the house or city over which she stood guard and to protect the individual as she or he passed through dangerous liminal places, Hecate would naturally become known as a goddess who could also refuse to avert the demons, or even drive them on against unfortunate individuals. It was probably her role as guardian of entrances that led to Hecate's identification by the mid-5th century with Enidia, a Thessalian goddess. Enidia's very name suggests that she watched over entrances, for it expresses both the possibility that she stood on the main road into a city, keeping an eye on all who entered, and in the road in front of private houses, protecting their inhabitants. This function would appear to have some relationship with the iconographic association of Hecate with keys, and might also relate to her appearance with two torches, which when positioned on either side of a gate or door illuminated the immediate area and allowed visitors to be identified. In Byzantium small temples in her honor were placed close to the gates of the city. Hecate's importance to Byzantium was above all as a deity of protection. When Philip of Macedon was about to attack the city, according to the legend she alerted the townspeople with her ever-present torches, and with her pack of dogs, which served as her constant companions. This suggests that Hecate's close association with dogs derived in part from the use of watchdogs who particularly at night, raised an alarm when intruders approached. Watchdogs were used extensively by Greeks and Romans. Cult images and altars of Hecate in her triplicate or trimorphic form were placed at three-way crossroads, though they also appeared before private homes and in front of city gates. In what appears to be a 7th century indication of the survival of cult practices of this general sort, Saint Eligius, in his Sermo warns the sick among his recently converted flock in Flanders against putting, devilish charms at springs or trees or crossroads, and, according to Saint Ewan would urge them, no Christian should make or render any devotion to the deities of the Trivium, where three roads meet. Thanks to her association with boundaries and the liminal spaces between worlds, Hecate is also recognized as a thonic, underworld, goddess. As the holder of the keys that can unlock the gates between realms, she can unlock the gates of death, as described in a 3rd century BCE poem by Theocritus. In the 1st century CE, Virgil described the entrance to hell as, Hecate's grove, though he says that Hecate is equally powerful in heaven and hell. The Greek magical papyri describe Hecate as the holder of the keys to Tartaros. Like Hermes, Hecate takes on the role of guardian not just of Rhodes, but of all journeys, including the journey to the afterlife. In art and myth, she is shown, along with Hermes, guiding Persephone back from the underworld with her torches. By the 5th century BCE, Hecate had come to be strongly associated with ghosts, possibly due to conflation with the Thessalian goddess Enidia, who traveled the earth with a retinue of ghosts and was depicted on coinage wearing a leafy crown and holding torches, iconography strongly associated with Hecate. By the 1st century CE, Hecate's thonic and nocturnal character had led to her transformation into a goddess heavily associated with witchcraft, 
witches, magic, and sorcery. In Lucan's Pharsalia, the witch Aritho invokes Hecate as Persephone, who is the third and lowest aspect of Hecate, the goddess we witches revere, and describes her as a rotting goddess, with a pallid decaying body, who has to wear a mask when she visits the gods in heaven. Hecate was seen as a triple deity, identified with the goddesses Luna in the sky and Diana on the earth, while she represents the underworld. Hecate's association with Helios in literary sources and especially in cursing magic has been cited as evidence for her lunar nature, although this evidence is pretty late. No artwork before the Roman period connecting Hecate to the moon exists. Nevertheless, the Homeric hymn to Demeter shows Helios and Hecate informing Demeter of Persephone's abduction, a common theme found in many parts of the world where the sun and the moon are questioned concerning events that happen on Earth based on their ability to witness everything and implies Hecate's capacity as a moon goddess in the hymn. Another work connecting Hecate to Helios possibly as a moon goddess is Sophocles' lost play The Root Cutters, where Helios is described as Hecate's spear. O sun our lord and sacred fire, the spear of Hecate of the Rhodes, which she carries as she attends her mistress in the sky. This speech from the root cutters may or may not be an intentional association of Hecate with the moon. In Seneca's Medea, the titular Medea invokes her patron Hecate whom she addresses as moon, orb of the night, and triple form. Hecate and the moon goddess Selene were frequently identified with each other and a number of Greek and non-Greek deities. The Greek magical papyri and other magical texts emphasize a syncretism between Selene Hecate with Artemis and Persephone among others. In Italy, the triple unity of the lunar goddesses Diana, Luna and Hecate became a ubiquitous feature in depictions of sacred groves, where Hecate, Trivia marked intersections and crossroads along with other liminal deities. The Romans celebrated enthusiastically the multiple identities of Diana as Hecate, Luna and Trivia. From her father Perses, Hecate is often called, Perses, meaning, daughter of Perses, which is also the name of one of the Oceanid nymphs, Helios' wife and Circe's mother in other versions. In one version of Hecate's parentage, she is the daughter of Perses not the son of Creus but the son of Helios, whose mother is the Oceanid Perse. Worship of Hecate existed alongside other deities in major public shrines and temples in antiquity, and she had a significant role as household deity. Shrine S to Hecate were often placed at doorways to homes, temples, and cities with the belief that it would protect from restless dead and other spirits. Home shrines often took the form of a small Hecateon, a shrine centered on a wood or stone carving of a triple Hecate facing in three directions on three sides of a central pillar. Larger Hecateons, often enclosed within small walled areas, were sometimes placed at public crossroads near important sites for example, there was one on the road leading to the Acropolis. Likewise, shrines to Hecate at three-way crossroads were created where food offerings were left at the new moon to protect those who did so from spirits and other evils. Dogs were sacred to Hecate and associated with roads, domestic spaces, purification, and spirits of the dead. Dogs were also sacrificed to the road. This can be compared to Pausania's report that in the Ionian city of Colophon in Asia Minor a sacrifice of a black female puppy was made to Hecate as the wayside goddess, and Plutarch's observation that in Boeotia dogs were killed in purificatory rites. Dogs, with puppies often mentioned, were offered to Hecate at crossroads, which were sacred to the goddess. The earliest definitive record of Hecate's worship dates to the 6th century BCE, in the form of a small terracotta statue of a seated goddess, identified as Hecate in its inscription. This and other early depictions of Hecate lack distinctive attributes that would later be associated with her, such as a triple form or torches, and can only be identified as Hecate thanks to their inscriptions. Otherwise, they are typically generic, or Artemis-like. Hecate's cult became established in Athens about 430 BCE at this time. The sculptor Alcamenes made the earliest known triple-formed Hecate statue for use at her new temple. While this sculpture has not survived to the present day, numerous later copies are extant. It has been speculated that this triple image, usually situated around a pole or pillar, was derived from earlier representations of the goddess using three masks hung on actual wooden poles, possibly placed at crossroads and gateways. Sanctuaries Hecate was a popular divinity, and her cult was practiced with many local variations all over Greece and western Anatolia. 
Caria was a major center of worship and her most famous temple there was located in the town of Legina. The oldest known direct evidence of Hecate's cult comes from Selenante, near modern-day Trapani in Sicily, where she had a temple in the 6th-5th centuries BC. Over against the sanctuary of Eletheia is a temple of Hecate, the goddess probably here identified with the Apotheost Iphigenia, and the image is a work of Scopas. This one is of stone, while the bronze images opposite, also of Hecate, were made respectively by Polycletos and his brother Nakites. Aside from her own temples, Hecate was also worshipped in the sanctuaries of other gods, where she was apparently sometimes given her own space. A round stone altar dedicated to the goddess was found in the Delphinion, a temple dedicated to Apollo, at Miletus. Dated to the 7th century BCE, this is one of the oldest known artifacts dedicated to the worship of Hecate. In association with her worship alongside Apollo at Miletus, worshippers used a unique form of offering. They would place stone cubes, often wreaths, known as jilloi as protective offerings at the door or gateway. There was an area sacred to Hecate in the precincts of the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, where the priests, Megabyzi, officiated. This sanctuary was called Hecatesian, Shrine of Hecate. Hecate was also worshipped in the Temple of Athena in Titane. In Titane there is also a sanctuary of Athena, into which they bring up the image of Coronis. The sanctuary is built upon a hill, at the bottom of which is an altar of the winds, and on it the priest sacrifices to the winds one night in every year. He also performs other secret rites, of Hecate, at four pits, taming the fierceness of the blasts, of the winds, and he is said to chant as well the charms of Medea. She was most commonly worshipped in nature, where she had many natural sanctuaries. An important sanctuary of Hecate was a holy cave on the island of Samothrake called Zarenthos. In Samothrake there were certain initiation rites, which they supposed efficacious as a charm against certain dangers. In that place were also the mysteries of the Korribants and those of Hecate and the Zarinthian cave, where they sacrificed dogs. The initiates supposed that these things saved them from terrors and from storms. Hecate's most important sanctuary was Legina, a theocratic city-state in which the goddess was served by eunuchs. Hecate was greatly worshipped in Byzantium. She was said to have saved the city from Philip II of Macedon, warning the citizens of a nighttime attack by a light in the sky, for which she was known as Hecate Lampadophoros. The tale is preserved in the Suda. As Hecate Phosphorus she is said to have lit the sky during the siege of Philip II in 340 BCE, revealing the attack to its inhabitants. The Byzantines dedicated a statue to her as the Lamp Carrier 100. According to Hesychus of Miletus there was once a statue of Hecate at the site of the Hippodrome in Constantinople. Hecate's island, Hecate's Nessu, also called Semite, was an islet in the vicinity of Delos. It was called Semite, because Hecate was honored with a cake, which was called P.S. Amaton. The island is the modern Megalos Rumatiaris. The Athenian Greeks honored Hecate during the Dipnon. In Greek, Dipnon means the evening meal, usually the largest meal of the day. Hecate's Dipnon is, at its most basic, a meal served to Hecate and the restless dead once a lunar month during the new moon. The Dipnon is always followed the next day by the Numenia, when the first sliver of the sunlit moon is visible, and then the Agathos Daimon the day after that. The main purpose of the Dipnon was to honor Hecate and to placate the souls in her wake who, longed for vengeance. A secondary purpose was to purify the household and to atone for bad deeds a household member may have committed that offended Hecate, causing her to withhold her favor from them. The Dipnon consists of three main parts, the meal that was set out at a crossroads, two, an expiation sacrifice and three, purification of the household.